Hello, my friends. How are you doing? I have some amazing AI news for you today. Also, as you might know, I am in Bangkok right now. I met the amazing Stable Diffusion Thailand group with their beautiful, very nice members. This is Max, the founder of the Thailand group. He gave me this beautiful T-shirt and also a tumbler with their logo. And they even treated me to a delicious hot pot dinner. Now let's get started with the news. So the first thing I want to show you today is called Demo Fusion. And what this promises is to unlock the hidden potential of diffusion models to create much more detail in much higher resolution. They show examples here and how this is done. They also provide some render times here that seem surprisingly long. So here you have 3072 by 3072 at nine minutes. However, what they also say is that with their technique, you can use intermediate results to surface preview. So you don't have to wait for the complete process to finish. You can look at the result if you like it before it finishes and then just if you like it, wait it out until it has rendered to the full resolution. On their website, they provide a lot of interesting examples comparing SDXL to the demo fusion model. Now they do say here that everything is rendered with a single RTX 3090 GPU, which I would still say is a rather modern and expensive GPU, but it's still interesting what kind of details they get from this. So for example, here you can see an image from SDXL with a 1024 by 1024 resolution. And then here we have their image with a much higher resolution as an initial render. You can see there's a lot of very nice details in here that are rendered directly by that model into the image. Here's another example of an SDXL scene of a forest with some foliage in there. As you can see, there's not much detail. And then again, they have their version here where again, the foliage down here has very nice details and also the light and everything looks really good. You can also try this on the replicate.com website today to see what kind of results you can get. And as you can see here, you can set an initial resolution that is much higher than what you can do with SDXL. Let's go to the next news. This is called video swap. And here you can switch a character inside of a video or an object with another character or an object and see here a cat being swapped out to a dog or a, a monkey. So there's very interesting potentials here. You also have these tracking points. Now the interesting thing is that you can even move these tracking points around. Here's an example of a car and initially the car doesn't fit because it's wider, but now they are swapping around these points. So they fit the actual shape of the car and now the car looks more like the input image. So this can even be adapted to the actual shape and movement of the character. Next, we have a really interesting process called style align image generation. Now, this is really cool because it is difficult to keep the same artistic style or image style in between different image generations and also different image subjects. So with the examples they provide here, you can see that this has a high consistency over different subjects. And here you can also see that this works with more complex styles and transferring them to very different subjects. And that is really impressive. I tried to give their examples a shot in ComfyUI with the IP adapter, which is a different technology. And I got some pretty interesting results, especially the style images with this plane that is red and blue have been applied in a very nice way. But you can still see that it's not exactly the same. And also there's some inconsistency because with IP adapter, this is not only taking the colors and the styles, but often also the shapes. So for example, here you can see that even though I wrote, I want to have a toy car on a road, it is not on a road because the IP input image is also not on a road. The same is happening here with the ship where first of all, the ship has kind of a strange shape, but then also the boat is supposed to be in a river, but the river again is green. Here we have an example on their website where they use a reference image and then also a depth map to apply that and have the same composition, but then different versions of the same style. I gave that a shot with IP adapter and it works fairly well with the same style reference and the same depth map that they are using on the website. Next, I'm going to show you a project here that is using an upscaling and a refiner for 
animate diff and as you can see the quality of the results is very impressive and you can actually download this today as a workflow for Comf UI. I downloaded the Comf UI workflow it looks very complex has a lot of different sections in here on the left side you can find here some text descriptions on how to use that you have to install some extra nodes of course so you want to use the manager for Comf UI down here and then you click on install missing nodes. I would suggest to restart Comf UI after that, do an update all with this button here and then restart Comf UI again so you are sure you have the newest versions of all of these nodes. And then after that, when you run it for the first time, you will still see that some of the nodes here have these red surroundings. So this means that the input is missing. So you want to scroll into that and look, for example, here we have a SVD checkpoint model. So you want to find that model and download that into the right folder. I will link the post on Reddit and you can see that below that you have a description here where you can download the workflow. And also here's how to use this workflow. And of course, you can use the comments here to ask questions and give feedback about this amazing workflow. In this case, I'm not going into more detail because that would be a very long video. In the next news, I want to show you Magic Animate. And this is pretty cool. So here, when we look at these examples that are provided, you see that we have a reference image. We have here an animation. It looks a little bit like the segment we have from ControlNet, but it's a different kind of technology. And then we have here the output animation, which looks surprisingly good. Now, if you ask yourself, why does the motion animation look so good? Where does this motion come from? Well, this is actually using video input to create this kind of motion tracking. And then this is used as a basis to render these animations from the image. Down here, you can see different video comparisons between different techniques. For example, Disco compared to Magic Animate. So here we have an example of Disco. You can see a lot of inconsistency, flickering, and also smearing around the character. While this is Magic Animate, and even though the quality might not be the best, you can see that there is a high consistency in the image, there is less smearing and less flickering around the character so that this provides a much better solution for stable AI video generation. Very impressive and interesting output. And they also provide examples here of images that are rendered, for example, with DALI 3 and then animated on top of this motion tracking from a video. Now, I'm super surprised how well this is not just tracking the character, but actually creating the side view and a part of the back view of the character that is consistent with the original image. Now, that is pretty, pretty amazing. And of course, users on Reddit have already applied that to create amazing, interesting animations with this technology. And as you can see here from the watermark, you can already use this today on Chromox. I don't know that service, but as you can see here, they have a web render service, so you can try that out if you want to. Next, let's talk about TurboVision XL, a very nice, interesting model. As you can see here, it can create high quality image with the SDXL Turbo model that is community trained. So this will render very fast and the results are very impressive from the detail and from the consistency they have. And they already look a lot better than what we have seen in the original SDXL Turbo model by Stability AI. So again, the community has brought a huge improvement to what SDXL Turbo models can do. And when you look here at the model description on Civit AI, you can see that the sampler is used DPM++ SDE Keras with only three to five steps and a CFG scale of one to 2.25. So with an SDXL Turbo model, the CFG scale often is very, very low. Let me know in the comments which of these news you find the most important. Thanks for watching and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.